Okay. So good morning or good afternoon, everybody. I'll get that right one of these days. Um, so everybody that I talk to seems to be really affected by all the energy swirling around us right now. And I am being incredibly affected by it. And, you know, it's, it's funny. I'm noticing how there are things happening in my life that are really challenging me, that are really poking at the places that I have the hardest time applying all of this stuff that I know works. And so I'm feeling like the universe is really like has us by the shoulders and is saying, come on guys, wake up now. Now is the time, it's time to wake up. And, you know, so I've been playing with all this energy that we've feeling and I've been feeling and all of these auspicious um, events. Hi, Natalia. All of these auspicious events that are happening around this time. And, you know, yesterday into, into today is a day of celebration for Ganesh. I talked about it a little bit la uh, last night. Um, it's, it's a celebration of Ganesh. And Ganesh is such an amazing deity. Ganesh represents so much like um he's so mischievous and he is so powerful and he embraces happiness and joy and spontaneity and he gets really pissed off also and he does impulsive things and he loves to eat like he is like this human god <laughs> and so we're celebrating his energy and i'm feeling like um there's no coincidence that in the midst of you know these full moons and these solar eclipses and you know, this beautiful connection between Jupiter and Saturn that's happening on the winter solstice this year. It's actually a Christmas star, it's called. All of these energies are all coming together. And Ganesh is who we're celebrating. There's no coincidences. And so I really want to work today on tapping into that energy of Ganesh, that energy of really embracing the sacred, but also allowing ourselves to break the rules of the way we think things are supposed to be or the way we're supposed to feel or the way we're supposed to navigate through any of this. You know, how do we step into our authentic selves and allow our authentic humanness to be messy, but still tap into that spiritual part of us that knows that we're okay? You know, I'm really starting to realize that I can't really be okay. I can't really tap into that in that energy unless I allow myself to feel all of the feelings that make me feel like I am not tapping into that energy. And I have to feel the fear and I have to feel the sadness and I have to feel the worry and then not stay there, then tap into all of this and allow this energy, the energy of Ganesh, the energy of all of my practices to lift me from that space. If I push that space away and I never enter that space, then I'm, it's like a shortcut. It's like, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying, I'll work on this another time. I'll work on this another time. And I feel like, as, as, a, as a world, as a, as a collective, we've been doing that with so many things. We'll look at that another time. We'll look at that another time. And the universe is saying no more. Now, now we have to look at it or not. But if we don't, then we suffer. If we look at it and we jump into these energies and we begin to harness them and trust them, trust them, then we will be lifted through this. Then there will be change. And so that is what the age of Aquarius is all about. And that is what the energy of Ganesh is about. Um, Ganesh is, he's new beginnings. He's this fertile ground for us to shed all that crap we've been carrying with us and start new now. And we can do it as messy or not messy as we want. So a little bit to think about as we move to our, to our practice, where can you be more authentically you? Where can you allow the messiness? And where can you tap deeper into that part of you that really trusts all of the stuff that we've been working on together for so long? So close your eyes, bring your palms together. Let your eyes begin to focus up at your third eye. Really take in all the energies around you and inside of you right now. And maybe notice that there's this merging of those energies. Your skin is a part of those energies. It's not a barrier to feel that. And we'll tune in together. Om Namo Guru Dev Namo. Inhale deeply. Om.
Guru so deeply into the sea of vibration that you just connected to. Feel the inner wisdom. Our brains are not gonna get us through right now. It's that inner wisdom, that intuition, that connection to vibration, connect. Moving into our next chant, Ad Gade Name, our usual celestial communication version. Three times together. Ad Gade Name, Jugad Gade Name, Sa. Good day, Name. Siri Guru Deve Name. Ah, good day, Name. Jugad. Good day, Name. Sad. Good day, Name. Siri Guru Deve Name Ad Gure Name Jugad Gure Name Sad Gure Name Siri Guru Deve Name. Pause, feel, take it all in. Maybe feel that vibration literally breaking up energy patterns inside of you as you allow the energy of trust to mingle with the vibration of protection, being taken care of, being guided. Feel yourself letting go of something here. The veils falling away. The truth in all of its forms, worry, and fear and joy and trust and belief, all of it making its way to the surface. Dive so deeply into all of it, embrace it all. And feel that energy of being held of protection all around and in you. Inhale deeply, prayer up to the sky. Really reach up as if you were trying to connect with all of that energy. Pelvic floor, navel center, squeezing up. You can tilt your head back, look up at the sky, everything, everything, everything. And then as you exhale, slowly bring your head back to center, your arms down wide. Swimming through the sea of emotions. 
the sea of truth, of ideas, ideals, everything that surrounds you. And really pausing with your fingers on the earth. Feel that energy of the earth coming up. Really feel it. In yoga and kundalini, all kinds of yoga, we repeat things over and over so that we rewrite that memory, that energy memory in our bodies. But sometimes when we do things over and over, we begin to lose our focus on them. We just kind of do them, go through the motions. Don't let this be emotion. Feel the energy of the earth. Notice what it feels like to plug in. Maybe even feel your fingers sinking deeper and deeper. Maybe you can feel the energy of the crystals below the surface, vibrating in the fire, in the earth. Everything that makes up the below, feel it. And then as you open your eyes, let yourself fall into child's pose, really diving into the earth. Feeling your front body connecting so deeply to those vibrations. And allowing the energy, those vibrations to move from the front body through the back body, the energy of our past. Move that energy that connects us to the things we protect ourselves from, from the past, emits from the back body. So circulate that nurturing, healing energy from the earth to the back body as you breathe deeply. And think about all the things that are happening around us now. It's like the nat nature of the universe is speaking to us in its own language. My first, this full moon energy that we experience, the clearing of the heart chakra, the making space. And then a solar eclipse that's coming on the 14th, I believe. And solar eclipses are energetically, symbolically times of exponential growth, rapid clearing change and then on the winter solstice this unique happening jupiter and saturn lining up in a way that they're going to look like they're connected twin planets it hasn't happened this way in over 800 years and it's called the christmas star and a christmas star is an energy that shares hope for humanity we're being giving messages we're going to be okay Breathe that energy, we're gonna be okay. Come onto your fingertips and walk that energy over to the right. Breathe so deeply here. As you walk back to center, continue to the left. Come back to center. Walking yourself back up to a seat. And once you get there, you're going to place your fingertips next to your body like we were before. So your arms at your sides, your fingertips touching the earth, close your eyes. You begin to inhale through your mouth. Exhale through your nose, long and deep. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Inhale mouth. Exhale nose and keep going in that pattern, being so aware of the sensation of your fingertips plugged into the earth.
begin to vibrate in your mind the sound lam, lam, L-A-M, lam, the seed sound of the root chakra. Each inhale, mentally vibrating lam with each exhale, mentally vibrating lam. We've been working in a lot of our classes in Cheryl's 21 day thing across the board, even other teachers from other, other studios have been teaching about the importance of clearing ourselves now, becoming clear vessels for this energy that's coming. We start with the root, beautiful red energy, or however it comes to you, whatever color comes to you, symbolically red, but what does your intuition do with it? What color is it for you? And then continuing that breath pattern, take your hands and place them right in front of your lower abdomen, your second chakra. And begin to move your hands in circles, outer circles as you inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, inhale through the mouth, exhale through the nose, just little circles in front of your lower abdomen, mentally beginning to vibrate the sound VAM, V-A-M, VAM. Clearing that energy of the second chakra, that orange energy, the energy of water. Right? The root is the earth, the second chakra is the water, free flowing, connecting to the elements. The ocean waves, they come and they go, they give, they receive, they let go of what they just brought back. They take whatever is given. Let us become so free flowing like the waves, like the rivers. And then let your hands move up to your third chakra, solar plexus. Place your hands on your solar plexus and begin breath of fire here. Really pumping that navel, feeling that heat, that it's our inner oven, our inner sun. Feel the energy, the attention to it clearing. Anything that stands in the way of your personal power, anything that stops that sense of belonging and foundation from the root and that creativity and that emotional stability from the second chakra to move up, anything that stands in the way of letting that energy get to that heart center gets burned away here, gets transformed. In your mind, rum, 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 rum. R-A-M, the seed sound, the third chakra. And then float your hands up to your heart, palms on your heart. Let your breath become natural as you begin to vibrate out loud, hum. So we're gonna do it together, hum. Um, um, and then pause and feel. Hum is the seed sound of the throat chakra. We're inviting that into the heart center so that our truth can move through our hearts instead of our voices. Our truth can move from our heart center combining all of the energy from below at the heart with the energy of moving our truth into this world. Just feel that for a moment. And then move your hands in front of your heart so the palms are down, fingertips are touching, and then begin to vibrate out loud, yum. Yum, seed sound of the heart center. And we're gonna move down through the lower chakras as we vibrate. Yum. And then as we move our hands up, hum. Yum. Hum. And just keep going at your own pace, moving down, clearing all the way to the root. Moving back up to the heart. Om yam. Just 
so much vibrational energy going on around us. We begin now to consciously connect to those vibrations by vibrating out loud, by vibrating our minds, by vibrating our hearts, by being so aware of the vibrations that exist inside of us. Hope for humanity, the Christmas star, let's feed that energy so when that day comes, we're so clear, we're such clear vessels to receive all of that, that hope and that clearing and that knowledge, that peace and equality and equanimity. It's there. We can live that as a society. The next time that your hands come all the way down to your root chakra, close your eyes, if they're not already closed, let your hands rest on your knees, pause and feel. And then take your hands, let them float to your sacrum, interlacing your fingers, opening your heart center. And with your hands in this position, begin torso rolls, rolling around your spine, letting your intertwined hands rest against your sacrum, or if it feels good to have them come up as you roll around, you can, but it's fine if they rest at your sacrum. Just nice big torso rolls with your heart wide open. Wide open, ready to receive fearlessly all of the energy coming our way. All of the aspects of the divine that live inside of us, rising up from inside of us, but also entering from outside. This collision, right? It's, it's like this collision of energies that makes stars, that makes planets. We're creating new creations. Next time that you come forward, pause, keep your hands where they are, take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, forward fold as much as you can, bringing those arms up and back any amount. It doesn't matter if it's a big movement or a little movement. And then inhale up, exhale down, and continue that way, flowing forward and back. Next time you come up, pull your hands all the way down to the floor. Really open that heart as wide as you can. Bring your arms out to the sides. Give yourself a huge hug and begin to move into those torso rolls in the other direction with your arms hugging yourself so dearly. Hold yourself so sweetly, so completely. Feel the love. Fall in love with yourself. There's nothing that blocks us more from stepping into our truth and our authenticity as not being in love with ourselves. Fall in love with you. I wish every single one of you could see yourselves through my eyes because you would just be so in love with yourself that you wouldn't even be able to stand it. And I'm sure it would be great if I could see myself through yours because <laughs> I'd do the same thing. And come to center, keeping that hug going. Just pause for a moment and feel. And let your hands fall down to your knees and begin some simple spinal flexes. If you never did another asana, pose in your entire life, except for this one, it would be enough. This is the most powerful asana pose in any tradition, kundalini, hatha. This moving of that spinal energy, this clearing of that central channel, giving attention to every aspect of our energy bodies. Feeling the energy of your chakras flowing and opening. And even more importantly than the chakras, I believe, the meridians, those channels that carry the energy from chakra to chakra. 
Feel that energy flowing. Feel anything that started off a little stagnant as you began to move, opening and flowing. See it as you'd like it to be, and then it will become what you desire, right? We're so potent, we're such potent creators. We're wizards, we're witches, we're incredibly magic. We just forgot. Or maybe you didn't forget, maybe you know. Maybe you got that magic wand out on your coffee table and you use it all the time. Next time you come forward, hold. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Roll over onto all fours, coming into tabletop. I'm gonna ask you to do something a little silly. <laughs> well, not right this second. So first, in tabletop, um, do a couple of cat cows. And then come to stillness. Come down onto your forearms. Bring your hands into prayer pose. And just for a moment, send a little prayer out to your family, your community. Just think of something that you'd like to send them. A shot of love or peace. And come back to tabletop. And in tabletop, walk to the right side of your mat. So walk to the right, just like a quarter of the way around. So you're not going to turn all the way around. So you'll be facing the right. Do a few hip circles here. And then as you come to stillness, come down to those forearms, hands in prayer. And send a little bit of love, a prayer out to all the strangers, the people that you don't know in your community, people that you pass all the time that maybe you notice, maybe you don't. Send those strangers some love. And then come on up to all fours. Take a walk to the back of your mat. So you're facing, yeah, yep, yeah, well, However you get there is okay. <laughs> yes, I can see all your butts. <laughs> and here, inhale your right arm up to the sky, to the, out to the right. Exhale it under the left. Don't come down though, just keep inhaling it up and down. A few times, opening and threading, opening and threading. And the next time that you come up, bring your hand down to the mat, come down to those forearms, hands in prayer. Think of someone in your life that's a little difficult that you have a hard time with. See if you could send them a shot of that love, a little prayer, a little wish. Then come on back up, continuing to move to the right, ending up on the, no, to the left. You wanna end up on the opposite side of your mat where you haven't been yet. So left maybe, I can, it's hard for me when I'm looking at you guys this way. Yep, all right, good. And begin that journey with the other arm, inhaling up, exhaling down. Next time you come up, let that hand land. Come down to those forearms, hands in prayer. And this one is for you. And I want it to be the biggest, most juiciest wish prayer that you've given to anyone yet. I want the biggest to be for you.
can only serve this world when we can serve ourselves with our full heart. We can't give anybody anything that we're not willing to give ourselves. Come on back up. Walk to the front of your mat, so on all fours. Inhale your right arm up and out to the right. Exhale, thread it under the left, and this time come down to that shoulder. That left arm can either be up at the top of your mat, it can be up in the air, it can be on your sacrum. Find a way to open that heart up. It's on the mat, really come onto those fingertips and see if you can open up the armpit. And then inhale back up and out. Let your hand land on the mat. Move to the other side, left arm up, threading through, coming down. Finding space, finding opening. Really allowing yourself to feel the love. And think about Ganesh. Right, most of us probably have a Ganesh statue or two. I have so many of him. You face him toward the door because he guarantees that when that door opens, whatever new walks in is going to be blessed and held the highest vibration possible. Come on up, arm up, back to the mat. Bring your knees nice and wide, your big toes together. Press back into child's pose. So I'm gonna read you a little bit about the symbolism of Ganesh, right? He's all about protection and power. And most of his symbolism is about safeguarding us from life's physical and subtle obstacles. Right? So he's really, he's amazing and he's hysterical and he can be scary sometimes. So his elephant head is a symbol of strength and power He's this gentle, loving, calm giant who can become fierce when necessary, sometimes just downright scary. He has large ears that show that he listens to those who ask for help from him. The ability to really listen to many people at once so he hears everybody. And his eyes are small because even though he's hearing everybody, you feel him focused and concentrated on you when you reach out to him. His large head, it symbolizes his intelligence, his thinking ability. He's this patron saint of letter writing, expressing yourself. Come on up. Back to all fours. A few deep hip rolls here. He has one broken tusk and it's a symbol of his sacrifice for the greater good. It's said that when he was writing sacred text, he had vowed to write until he was done. Move in the other direction. And his pen stopped writing and he didn't want to stop. And so he broke off one of his tusks and he began to write with that. So it's the kind of sacrifice that was really commitment, the sacrifice for the greater good. Right? He has a large stomach, so he's able to consume and digest all the good and all the bad in life. Come to stillness. Tuck your toes, hips up to the sky. Downward facing dog. Begin to walk your feet towards your hands. Grab opposite elbows, sway from side to side. And then release your elbows, your hands down. Let your right hand plant right in the center of the mat. Left arm up to the sky, opening and twisting. Exhale that arm down, move to the other side, stretch up. And then flow that way a few times. 
And he's extremely humble. He's so humble that he rides the smallest, meekest of creatures. His vehicle is a mouse. So he has so much humility. The next time that your left hand comes down, bring your right down to meet it. Grab a hold of your ankles and begin to walk back and forth on your mat, holding on to your ankles. Just an elephant walk. This is a really good asana for depression. You can either walk this way or you can place your palms on the floor and walk on all fours. Five minutes walking around your house like this will help if you're feeling depressed, deflated. And then come back to the top of your mat. Bend your knees a lot, inhale your arms out wide, bring yourself all the way up to stand. All the way up. Reach for the sky, interlace your fingers. Bend your body so that your trunk is parallel to the floor, your palms are pressing out and just begin to sway and figure eight and move. You can even drop your torso down if you want as part of your movement. He has a rope in one hand that represents his ability to help pull us up toward our ultimate goal of realization and liberation. He has an ax to cut through all attachments with the impermanent and material world. A bowl full of sweets to reward us for spiritual development. He loves his sweets. He knows the value of a good meal. And his fourth hand is often shown in a mudra, a different mudra, but most of the time it's the fearless mudra, abhaya, to remind us of our true nature, that we are fearless, that we have nothing to fear because everything is us and we are everything. Everything we fear is just a part of us. Come to stillness, reach up to the sky, let those fingers separate. Come down to your sides. We're gonna do a little bit of a Tai Chi movement here to gather the energy of the sky and bring it to our heart. And then we're gonna do a second one that is going to combine the energy of the heavens and the earth. So to start, arms at your sides, begin to inhale your arms out to the side. And as you bring them up overhead, come up onto your tiptoes. And as you exhale down, just bring your hands down to your sides, come back to your heels and keep doing that. Don't crouch yet, Jack. I know I did it differently last night. Inhaling up, gathering all that energy that we've been talking about. Exhaling, bringing it into your body, into your electromagnetic field. Toes up and then down to the heels. Do that a few more times. First, it's a little hard to get your balance for me. And then, then as I kept going, I found more balance. And now what you're going to do is as you inhale up, gather that energy. As you exhale down, crouch down. Bring the energy all the way down. Bend your knees, crouch down. Bring your heels down. Inhale back up, come up to your tiptoes. Exhale, bring the energy down. Crouch all the way down. Bend your knees, crouch down as if you're trying to sit on the floor. Natalia, you want to almost come into chair pose as you come down. Oh, are you not? Okay. Yeah, inhale up. And then as you exhale, bring your butt down almost as if you're trying to sit. Yeah, and then come back up. There you go. A few more times, really feeling the gathering of that energy. Moving it through your body. The next time that you reach up, stay up, balance on those tiptoes for an extra breath, and then bring your palms together overhead, hands to your heart as you come down to your heels. Pause with your eyes closed and feel. Then we're gonna do a little bit of a ritual to Ganesh using the Ganesh Mudra. So take your hands at your heart center, starting out in Anjali Mudra. And you're gonna to begin to swivel your hands so that the right palm is going to face your heart 
The fingers are gonna move toward the elbows. Your hands are gonna be facing each other. Pull them apart a little bit, curl your fingers, lock your fingers together, thumbs up in the air like this. This is Ganesh Mudra, pull, but don't let those fingers come apart. Pull as hard as you can, eyes closed. And then keeping your fingers together, relax the pull. Begin to swivel your hands back to Anjali Mudra. And then move to the other side. Swivel your hands. Left palm is facing the heart. Curl those fingers and pull. And continue that way. Back to the center. Anjali Mudra. Swivel, pull. And just keep going. Eyes closed, going at your own pace. And begin in your mind to mentally vibrate Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha. 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 Om Gam Gana. Pataye Namaha. Keep going a few more times. Chanting to Ganesh, asking him to rise up from inside of us because that's where he is. That's where everything is. Bring us that protection. Bring us that fearless heart. Allow us to be impetuous. Allow us to be impulsive. Allow us to be whatever we are and guide us through that. The next time that your palms come into Anjali Mudra, stay there. Pause. Feel the energy of Ganesh. The son of Shiva and Parvati, so such a sacred soul so connected to the moon energies that are <clears throat> moving through us these days. Inhale deeply, bring that prayer up to the sky, stretch, stretch, stretch. Exhale, arms wide around, dive all the way down towards your toes. As you get there, bring those palms together, bring that prayer up through the center of your body, rise all the way up. Do that a few more times, exhaling down. Make a living virtual puja to Ganesh. Flowing like water. Ungam gana pataye namaha. Bowing to that elephant that holds us so dearly and protects us so fiercely. that feeds us the fruits, the sweets, the beauty of life, that helps us digest it all, the good, and what we label bad, the hard to digest becomes digestible and transformed at the same time. It takes poison that we were forced to swallow and turns it into sweets, to goodness, to love. Next time that you dive down, stay there, plant your hands, step your right foot back, your left to meet it. Stretch out for a moment and down, we're facing dog. And then move into your knees, float into child's pose. Take a few inhales through your nose and exhales through your mouth here. And then come on up to all fours. Make sure that you have a nice firm foundation. Your palms, your wrists are under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Take a deep inhale. 
As you exhale, stay emptied of breath and pump your navel. Pump it as long as you can till you have to inhale again. And then when you have to inhale again, inhale, exhale, pump again. Maybe vibrate Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha as you pump, pump, pump that belly. Feeling a clearing. Doing our own inner energy work. Clearing that lower triangle so that we can bring our communication to our heart center. Filled with the truth of our third chakra. The creativity of our second. The security, the knowing that we belong exactly where we are, the first. Feel those energies melding together as you pump, 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 pump. And after the next round of pumping, let go, return to your natural breath. Make your way to a seat. You can put your, you can put a blanket under your seat if you'd like. We're gonna do a little Ganpati Kriya meditation. It's a Ganesh meditation. It's to make the impossible possible. So before we begin, close your eyes for a moment and think of something in your life that feels impossible right now something you'd like to shift. It could be something that your mind tells you is huge or something that your mind tells you is not so huge. Because everything is both. Think about what you want to shift. You're going to take your hands, place them in Gyan Mudra on your knees, palms up. It's a really simple, simple meditation. We're going to chant Satanama, Ramadasa, Sase Soham. And we're going to do it as we do Kirtan Kriya. So it's going to be Ramada, I'm sorry, Satanama, Ramadasa, Sase Soham. Right? So just like we do Kirtan Kriya, thumb touching each of the fingers as we go through each syllable of each chant. Eyes are going to be nine tenths open and focus down to the ground, so just a blur. If that becomes really uncomfortable, you can close your eyes fully and then try opening them again. That really brings some pressure to the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, so we want that pressure. Eyes closed, fingers beginning in Gyan Mudra, thumb and pointer connected, and we'll start moving. Sa, ta, na, ma, ra, ma, Da, sa, sa, se, so, hum. Sa, ta, na, ma. Ra, ma, da, sa. Sa, se, so, hum. Keep going. Natalia, your hands are on your lap, on your knees with your palms up. And you're moving your fingers. Yep, you got it.
After the next round, you come to stillness. Everybody take a deep inhale, hold your breath and start stretching and moving and twisting your body in all different ways as you hold your breath in. Pause with your arms up, exhale powerfully. Inhale, hold, twist and move. Picture Ganesh spinning and twirling and dancing. Be Ganesh. Stillness, powerful exhale. <sighs> Inhale, do it one more time. Hold the breath, dance, twist, move, play. Be so, so much fun. Be your own best company. Have fun, fun, fun. Hold it as long as you can. And when you're done, exhale completely. Let your arms come down. You're going to bring your hands onto your knees. You're going to stare down at the tip of your nose with your eyes closed and hold your body totally still as you just breathe long and deep. And when you feel ready, you can make your way to your back. We'll do a couple of twists, stretches before we melt into Shavasana. If you want to stay where you are to meditate, you can do some twists and stretches in your seat or just stay in meditation. If you make your way to your back, bring your knees into your chest. Really squeeze in, bring your nose up to your knees for a moment. And then rest your head back down. You can begin to circle your knees away from each other and toward each other. Beautiful, Lauren, I love that. Come to stillness. If you're on your back, let your arms come out to a T, your knees move to the left. If you're seated, you wanna take a twist to the left, do that. And then back to center and to the right. Coming back to center, arms and legs stretching toward the ceiling. And slowly begin to lower your left arm and your right leg. And then as you begin to bring those up again, lower the opposites. And just do that a few times. Let everything move toward the mat, bring your arms overhead. And just stretch out, let, let your arms fall back onto the mat, your legs onto the mat, so everything's laying flat. And then stretch through your fingertips and out through your heels on the mat, giving your body a nice stretch. If you're seated, you can just reach up to the sky. And then let everything settle in. 
when you're ready, moving into Shavasana. Maybe bring Ganesh with you. Om Gam Gana Pataye Namaha. Shine the light of loving care on yourself. If you would grow to your best self, be patient, not demanding, accepting, not condemning, nurturing, not withholding, self-marveling, not belittling, gently guiding, not pushing and punishing, for you are more sensitive than you know. Mankind is as tough as war, yet delicate as flowers. We can endure agonies, but we open fully only to warmth and light. And our need to grow is as fragile as a fragrance dispersed by storms of will, to return only when those storms are still. So accept, respect, and attend your sensitivity. A flower cannot be opened with a hammer. Slowly begin to deepen your breath. And gently begin to bring movement back to your fingers, your toes, stretching and yawning your body in any way that feels good. Let the soles of your feet, the palms of your hands meet, rubbing. And if you're on your back, knees into your chest, either rocking up and down on your spine or rolling over to the right. We'll all meet in a seat. Hands in Anjali Mudra. Eyes closed. May the long time sun shine upon you. All love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. Please join me in sealing our practice with a long sat nam. Inhale. So Nam. Bring your thumbs to the space between your brow, dropping your chin into your own magnificence. Be love, believe, be true to you. Satnam. <laughs> 